Hi folks, lots to talk about today. We're going to talk about un-uns, we're going to talk about balance, and we're going to talk about chokes. Why these subjects have been covered so many times on the internet in books and publications, but I see still a lot of confusion with new and experienced amateurs and um, there's probably a lot of myths around what a, what an un-un will actually do for your antenna and there's three separate categories so we're going to talk about the ones that are used for N-fed half-wave style uh, antennas we're going to talk about the ones you would use with a, a random wire antenna and then uh, we're going to talk about balance at the end and finally chokes and they're all basically a similar idea. You've got a ferrite core with some wires wrapped around it, but they all do different jobs. So first of all, end-fed half waves. So an end-fed half wave is a, a resonant antenna. Uh, for example, um, a 67 foot wire will be resonant on the 40 meter band, the 20 meter, 15 and 10. Now we'll not talk about the radiation patterns and all that kind of stuff, but all you need to know is it is a resonant antenna on those bands. What it does have though is a very, very high impedance at the feed point, and that's when you use a 49 to 1 on, on or an auto transformer. It's taking an unbalanced antenna and it's transforming the impedance um, and you're connecting it to an unbalanced line, a piece of coax. So here's here's the one I made. This is the 49 to 1 I use on a day-to-day -day basis. There you go. That's what it looks like. Pretty much standard 49 to 1 that you can find anywhere on the internet. Now when I made this, I made two terminals uh, for the antenna wire and for a, for an earth. But I never ever actually use a, a ground wire with this. I do connect 5 metres of coax to it and that acts as the ground because I'm only using QRP. Now you do lose a bit of efficiency with these, as you do with um, anything that's a, a core with some wires wrapped around it. This is a much better one, Colin MM0 OPX. I will link his video. He's done an incredible amount of work trying many different types of core. This uses a different core and it's a 64 to 1, so it's a different ratio. But he found this to be the most efficient. And um, But again, it does exactly the same job. It is for an end head fed antenna it's to bring your impedance down to 50 ohms and you can use those antennas without the tuner they'll go straight to your radio and should be able to uh, bring the swr within the suitable range for a naked radio with with no tuner if it's set up correctly when i use my nfed half wave portable um, i tend to have it in an inverted v but um, you can run them vertically um, as well or as, as slopers it might affect the the uh, the impedance the SWR a little bit. So that is your 49 to 1 or your 64 to 1 and they're designed for a resonant N-fed half wave and they do not need a tuner. So the next uh, thing we're going to talk about is um, 9 to 1s, 4 to 1s, 16 to 1s, un-uns, right? They're for the random wire family of antennas and random wires aren't just a random length of wire. Uh, there's a published list of lengths that work as a random wire. So I've got two examples here that I use. There's a 41 foot wire uh, that's the shortest HF antenna that I tend to use. And there's a 17 foot counterpoise that goes along the ground with that. And then this one's an 84 or 85 foot length of wire. It's a, a W3 EDP, but effectively it is a, a random length antenna. It also has a 17 foot counterpoise that in my case strings along the ground. So, the random lengths are chosen so the impedance is quite low at the frequency that we're interested in. So for example, this W3 EDP, I, I tend not to use 80 meters portable, but I can use it on 40, 30, uh, 20, 50, 17, 15, right up to, te to 10 meters. Now on some of those bands, the SWR is less than 2 to 1. But on some of them it's a good bit higher, 3 or 4 to 1. So you do need to use these random length family of antennas with a tuner. You may be able to connect them straight to a tuner um, using um, you know, something like one of these little connectors with the, with the BNC on the end of it. But more often than not, they're used with a nun on, which helps bring the impedance down a little bit and makes it easier for your tuner, tuner to manage. So I've got some examples here. This is a, a commercial one. Now I run a W3 EDP at home. 
and this is what I use at the top of my pole and it's um, it's a variable one. You can connect it as a 4 to 1, a 9 to 1 or a 16 to 1 and there's also a ground connection on it. Here's the first one I made using an FT140 toroid which is, is the general sort of all-purpose toroid for these things. You have a look inside, it's probably got twice the weight with the amount of glue I've got holding it together. And you can see it's got two connections on it. So the red one goes to my um, my wire, which generally would be the W3 EDP, so 84 feet of wire. And the black one goes to 15 foot counterpoise. I can either put a bit of coax on there or connect it straight to my radio. So it is an un un because it's an unbalanced antenna connected to an unbalanced feeder. And here's my smallest one, which is again, this is a nine to one, but it's made with a much smaller core, which um, hopefully you can see the inset of me building it in the corner of this video. Um, but you don't have to, you know, you don't have to build these, you can buy them. So that is your, your, nine, your nine to one or your four to one or your 16 to one. So they're for use with random wire unbalanced antennas and they're designed to bring the impedance down so your tuner uh, can deal with it. And you know the tuners I started using when I first started doing portable work was this LDG Z11 Pro 2. It's actually got um, an external 12 volt uh, power socket but it's actually got a rack inside it and you can fill it with double A's and just run it off, um, off of batteries so that's quite handy if you're out and about. And then I progressed to the, you know, the KX2, which mine just got an external, internal tuner on it anyway. And um, both of those tuners work really well with those um, random wire antennas that I use. Right, the next subject then, balance. So balance are for taking a balanced load and transferring it to an unbalanced feed line. So a dipole is a balanced antenna. You've got two legs that are the same length and in reality if they're strung out at the correct angle and they're above identical ground it is a balanced antenna not always the case this is the center of my uh, portable and um, dipole which is um, linked for 40 and 20 meters now because of qrp there isn't actually a ball in here this is just the, the connections uh, potted up in some epoxy and uh, connected straight to the coax. If you were running a bit of power, you would want to put a ballon in here, okay? And that would take your balanced um, antenna wires and connect them to your unbalanced cable, which is your coax. If you were using ladder line, then the antenna is balanced and the feeder is balanced, so you would not need one. So if you're running a bit more power, you'd want a one-to-one -one ballon in there. So an example, an extreme example, is this uh, Diamond BU50 that I bought decades ago and have never used. Um, your uh, coax would go in the bottom and these tabs are for your, um, for your dipole. Uh, this is supposedly good for 1.2 kilowatts. It's quite heavy as well though, so you know, you'd, uh, it's for, a, for a, beefy, a beefy antenna. Now, your ballon can also have a ratio to it. So this is a four to one ballon. Now when I first started in radio, I had a, uh, a W3 EDP connected to this because I didn't actually know myself that I should have been using an un un instead of a ball un. Um, but if you have a non-resonant um, dipole, well, this will tra you know transform the impedance down for you uh, four to one. Probably a bit more limited in its use, which is why it's been in my uh, spares box for a long time. So that's the balance. Now, when you get to the bottom of your your feed line, you may want to use a choke. So why might you use a choke? Because you're saying that well, I've got a balanced antenna. I've put a a ballon. Um, at the joining point to the, the feed line. By the time I get down here, there shouldn't be any excess RF on this. However, unless your antenna is above a balanced piece of ground, the wires are identical, you know, it's just, it's almost impossible in the real world to get everything balanced so there's no RF on the, on the shield of the coax. There will be a little bit, and the more power you use, the more noticeable it will be. For QRP, you don't really need to worry about it. However, when running a bit more power, you can connect a choke 
at the bottom of your feed point or somewhere along your feed point. And a choke is simply several turns of coax um, around a toroid. There's various different uh, ratios uh, of turns that, the, that you can use in different types of toroid. And the idea is that if there's any um, RF on the shield of your coax, it stops it getting into your radio. And that is that. So there we go, we've done, in the space of about five minutes, we've done um, on uns for end fed half waves, on uns for random wires, balance for centre fed dipoles and chokes. I've deliberately kept away from the technical side of the subject because there's loads of videos and publications out there that describe that. But it's really just to get the message across around what type you would use for what type of antenna. So 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 for an end fed half wave, which is resonant. Um, the other ones, which are 4 to 1s and 9 to 1s, etc., for your for your random wires, but they're not entirely random. And then your um, your balance for the centre of your uh, your dipoles. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got anything to add, leave it in the comments. I'll put loads of links in the description of this video. So uh, if it's a subject that you want to look into a bit more, you can uh, dive in. All right. See you on the next one.